It started from the first night I'd moved into my new apartment. After a difficult day of packing and unpacking, I finally collapsed in bed. I remember being relieved that I didn't start my new job working the till at a local bookstore till the day after tomorrow. As I drifted off without fear of an alarm, I smiled at the thought of sleeping till noon. Excuse me? A high-pitched gentle voice called out. It stirred me a little, but I was still half asleep. I was able to drift off when I heard it again. Excuse me? This time the voice was accompanied by a few sniffles. I was confused and still dazed from a heavy sleep. Maybe it was a part of my dream, leaking into reality as I, as I fought from drifting back to sleep. Excuse me, please? This time there was clear crying. I was sure I wasn't imagining it. The voice seemed whispered, yet I felt it ringing clearly in my head. More awake now, I looked at my phone, seeing it was 3.20 in the morning, about nine hours sooner than I'd hoped to be up. Strangely, I don't remember being afraid. Although I was hearing a voice, despite being alone in my room, something about that voice seemed innocent, confused by what was going on. I said out loud, Hello? It was silent for a while. I was about to laugh it off and go back to sleep when I heard a response. Hello? Can you help me, please? The desperation in the voice made my heart sing. As I shot out of bed and turned my bedside lamp on, I looked around my room, trying to find the source of the voice, but, but all I saw were a few scattered possessions and some empty boxes. Who are you? What's your name? I asked aloud. I'm Tyler. I don't know, it's dark. The cries were replaced by sniffles once more, but the fear in the poor child's voice was palpable. I didn't understand what was going on. Was I hearing some kind of ghost? What was I supposed to do if it was? All I felt was that I had to help Tyler. I heard a cry of agony, which hurt all the more in the child's voice. Mommy died when I was born. Daddy put me in here. In where? In the dark. Did ghosts talk about other dead people? Or was a kid really trapped somewhere close enough for me to hear? My new apartment was on the ground level. One of my walls was shared with an old lady, Miriam, who lived alone. And the apartment on the other side was empty. My landlord, Jeff, lived in the flat above me. But as far as I knew, he didn't have a kid around Tyler's age. I, I still struggled to place the direction the voice was coming from. It almost sounded like it was inside my head. I placed my ear up to the wall and I moved to each corner of the room to see if it was any louder anywhere. Are you hurt? A little. There's a bruise on my arm from when daddy threw me in here. I'm scared. Please help me. Please don't go away. It's okay, Tyler. I'm here. I'm, I'm gonna help you. I'm not going anywhere. I heard Tyler fight back a sob. Thank you. By now, I'd moved all around the room and still couldn't find anywhere where Tyler's voice was particularly louder or softer. I wanted to call the cops, but I mean, what if this was just a ghost? What if this was a kid? I couldn't risk it. Okay, well, I'm going to call the police now, Tyler. They'll come help. Okay. I grabbed my phone and I called the cops. The dispatcher seemed confused when I said I could hear a, a little boy trapped, although I didn't know where the sound was coming from. I tried to explain, but it didn't seem to make sense to them. It barely made sense to me. When I explained that Tyler had mentioned a bruise from being thrown by his dad, however, the dispatcher told me to expect a response in about 20 minutes. I said aloud, still unsure which direction I should be facing, They're coming, Tyler. They'll be here soon to help. Thank you. Now, can you feel anything around you? How big is the room you're in? There's nothing else in here. It's too small for me to stand up. Are they really coming? Yes, Tyler. They'll, they'll be here soon. I thought about whose kid Tyler could be. Maybe some other tenant who threw the poor kid in a space in the wall? Somewhere in the building? Somewhere close enough that his, his voice would carry over to me? Given there was only one name I knew in the entire building, I decided to try it. Even though he never mentioned having a kid. Hey, Tyler? Yeah? Is your daddy's name Jeff? Yeah. Part of me that was worried that I had called the cops after hearing a ghost disappeared. Now, that monster upstairs had thrown poor Tyler somewhere small and dark and trapped him in there. Thankfully, I could hear sirens by now, closing in quickly. 
Tyler, you with me? They're here. You might you might have to help them find you. I heard no response. My heart dropped. I couldn't take anything happening to the kid now, not when help was so close. I heard a car park outside and ran out to meet them. Upstairs, the kid is trapped somewhere in my, in my landlord's room. I led the two police officers upstairs. They knocked loudly, yelling for Jeff to let them in. A few seconds later, Jeff opened the door and rubbed his eyes. What's going on? He inquired groggily. We had a report that a kid's been abused here. Please step aside so we can search your home. Still clearly in the process of waking up, Jeff stepped aside. As the cops moved in to search the room, I entered behind them and turned to Jeff. Where are you keeping him? Where's Tyler, you sick bastard? Tyler. I saw the cops in the bedroom opening up a wardrobe. I ran towards them, hoping they'd find the kid there, but there was just some old clothes. I moved to the walls and started yelling, Tyler, we're here to help. The cops have come. Please say anything. Where are you? Silence. The cops looked at each other, confused. The landlord looked strangely solemn, although I could tell that he was regarding me with pity. I turned to the cops and tried to explain. Please, you have to help me, okay? I heard the kid. He was crying. He wanted help. He said Jeff heard him and, and trapped him in a small, dark room. The cops looked unconvinced. But they searched as thoroughly as they could. It was a small apartment, so it didn't take that long. There was no word from Tyler, and the cops couldn't find anything. And after a while, they apologized to me and to Jeff, and suggested that I might look into getting some help at perhaps therapy. They apologized once more, and they left me, leaving me and Jeff alone. I stared at him angrily. I know you've got Tyler somewhere. I'm going to find him. Tyler's dead. Matt took me aback. What? Yeah. My kid Tyler, he died a few years ago. You're not the first one to hear him, though. And that shocked me even more. You... No, I, I heard him... He was crying. He wanted help. Yeah, sometimes he cries. Sometimes he asks for help. The flat next to you gets it too. That's why the uh, previous tenant left. The old lady on your other side can hear with a dam, so it doesn't bother her. I wasn't convinced. In a harsh tone, I asked, how did he die? In almost patronizing yet sad tone, Jeff replied, it's all history now. Don't make me revisit it again. It's hard enough going through it once. That little shit killed my Victoria too. Just to I noticed him lose his composure as he spoke, fighting to stop himself from saying more. I was afraid about what he would do next, but just took a deep breath, faced me again, calm. Like I said, it's history now. You killed him, I said in shock and rage. You abused him when he was alive, and then you killed him. His face twisted in anger, although he forced his voice to remain calm. Just go downstairs and leave it be. Invest in headphones. Or even better, leave. I'll tear up your tenant's agreement any time you want. Fuming but unable to say anything more, I, I hung my head and I stumbled back downstairs. Back to my place. I wanted to call the cops again. I, I wanted to do something, but what? I couldn't do anything. I barely even knew what happened back then. I knew then that I needed to find so somewhere else to live. I sat down on my bed, turned on my phone, noting that I was it was around 5 a.m. at that point. Now I began browsing through the same apartment listing websites that I had used to find this place. And that's when I heard it again. The same innocent, pained voice that started this. Excuse me? Please? Can you help me? I thought to myself. No. No. And wiped away the tears that were brimming in my eyes. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and thank you so much for listening to tonight's story, whether it be an episode of something or tonight's podcast or tonight's YouTube. For all of you who are interested in seeing me do things besides uh, telling horror stories, I'm also on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Mr. Creepypasta. I've been playing through Resident Evil the entire series with my sister-in-law for the very first time for both of us, so that's a lot of fun. 
if you'd ever like to join me for that. And a very big thank you to all my patrons, and you can always join them at patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. People like Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Chapinski, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, G Weevil 3, Diana Krauss, Stephen Van Huss, Chance Burnett, Tristan Pelton, Nico Cal, The Ginger Bros, Dante Rao, Rafael Rodriguez, Last Blade Song, Eliminator 86, Nebsky, Steampunk Sinner, Caleb Dougal, Daniel Paulson, Sky Harbor, The Homeless Bird 93, Bobby Carmen, Liam Newman, Aaron Stormcrow, Barbara Masado, Thomas Burgett, Azazel Rotten, Let's Get Scared, S-Man, Andrew Kirasuba Warnock, Bad Honey, Creepypasta Adam, Someone You Love, Brennan Wright, Said The King 56, and Somber Puppet. Thank you guys so much for your continued support to all of you on Patreon, you guys that are down there in the description and everyone else. And thank you all for listening and watching and being subscribed. Sweet dreams. <laughs>